Hi guys, it's Flamon from Flamon Miniatures and today I will present you the next video tutorial about painting this sepulchre guard. What basically means that this is a skeleton warrior from Warhammer Underworld set, if I remember correctly. Forgive me, if I said something wrong, I'm not a player, I'm just a painter and I bought these miniatures because I think that they are really really great looking skeleton warriors and such classic looking fantasy miniatures are something that I really like and yeah that's why I thought that this is going to be a, an interesting video series for my YouTube channel. So here we are but before we start be sure to subscribe to my channel in order to don't miss out on any new videos. Sorry, it's the first time I'm saying all of this. I, I heard that it's like you have to do this when you are recording videos for YouTube and yeah, I know it didn't sound very professional, but yeah, be sure to subscribe my to my channel. It will be cool. Yeah, I don't have any ads on my videos, so it must be good for you. Okay. So what you can see in here is already presented on my video tutorials and today I will work on his shield and on my next video I will present to you how to paint his face and that's the question when you have a skeleton warrior and his head is just a naked skull then do you call this front part of the skull face or not or you just call it like front of the skull um honestly i honestly have no idea what's the right answer but i started to think about it considering the fact that i want to record another video but okay e enough with the chit chat i hope that it wasn't very boring. Okay, so um, the idea for this shield is to paint it with copper and steel NMM. I will paint it with steel because I already painted this part of it with steel and when shields were commonly used by warriors, um, they were so usually sometimes, not always, but sometimes and they had metal steel elements around them to make them more solid and then the middle the main the main thing which was used for building creating a shield was made of wood and yeah so i want to have the this part in the middle painted with copper nmm you might I don't know if you've ever tried to paint anything with copper NMM. I I started working on this on this color scheme many many years ago, and since then I it really grew on me. I I like it a lot, but I must say I didn't use it in a long long time. So I hope that everything will work just good, but I'm not sure what will happen. So after many many tests, I would say that. Let's start with Dark Flesh Tone. Yes, I'm thinking about the right order for painting. Because... Well... Sometimes you can make things more problematic than they should be if you're working in the wrong order. And then we, I will also paint uh, the steel NMM. So I need colors like uh, black gray. Very important color. Yikes. Okay, because I will work now on with a bit bigger surface then I will work with a bigger brush 
Okay, so I will use Winsor Newton CS7 size 2 for this job because when you're working on bigger surfaces, it's much better to use bigger brush. But before I start working on it, I will use brush cleaner from Winsor Newton. No, I don't know if you can use any other brand cleaner because I never used any other brand cleaner. So I don't know. I, I'm using this because it's very gentle for miniatures and for paints. And now with an ear cotton pick, I'm, I'm basically touching the surface that I will be painting right now. When I'm doing this, I'm removing a small amounts of grease from the miniature. And I also make the, what's happening is also that the, it's so wet um, that the base color, the, the paint will is a bit softer and it's easier for the new paint to stick to it. It's not sliding over the surface. So it's better. But now it doesn't want to dry. You must be careful and not to push the ear pick to the miniature because then you can leave um, cotton fibers on the surface and then it will be problematic for your painting. Okay, it's almost dried out. And now I simply, I need to paint the inner parts of the shield with uh, with this dark flesh tone. I'm sorry for all the noises that you can hear. I hope you won't, but you can. Uh, yeah, I had like three months of a time without a construction under my windows. It's like impossible to work with. And one of my neighbors is using power drill right now. It's like I never have quiet time in my house. There's always construction under my windows or our neighbors are working on their flats. So yeah, it's hard to record good, good quality videos in environment like this. But maybe, maybe I will be able to remove all the noises. I don't know. I'm not sure. I can hear them. They are irritating. Oh, great. Now I can see a fly on my desk. It's a really small fly. It's a really small one, but irritating like hell. Okay. I think it's time to zoom in. Okay. So as you can see, after the first layer, uh, it doesn't look great. This is why I'm always using more than one layer. Usually like, it depends on the color, of course, because when I'm painting with white color and I need to have a solid, homogenic, nice layer of white paint, uh, then it's really important not to hurry up to use diluted paint and apply many layers. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I left the. It's hard to take. Uh, it's hard to look on the screen and the miniature at the same time. So what I was saying, yes, uh, when, so there are many different colors and depending on the color, the pigment is made in a bit different way and some colors are covering easily and strongly like brown colors or gray colors like dark gray but there are colors that are very problematic when it comes to this and their pigmentation is working in the way that uh, their covering is very bad like yellow paints White is hard, but not, but not the hardest. So that's why, for example, 
yellows are in my opinion the worst so when you want to have a nice nice layer of yellow paint you need to first create a nice layer of white paint as the base color because if you try to paint with yellow over black oh my god this will take you forever and the final effect won't be well it depends on your determination of course you could probably be really crazy about this and apply like i don't know 30 layers and then it would be maybe it would be more more solid or good looking so now what i'm creating i think that two layers of paint will be enough uh, also because this shield is supposed to be worn out obviously we can see these holes in it so i think that if i won't be very precise and I'll be a bit sloppy with painting it then we will have a bit of black paint um, visible under the layer of this new uh, brown color and in this case this could be actually a really good thing because it will look more nasty but so actually more realistic so i think that because of this what i just said i will just leave two layers of paint to it yeah th this should be enough i just don't know why everything is so glossy in here okay so this is the position of the shield that this guy will hold it like this now it's very important thing to decide where to put reflections of light on it you can follow the real reflections on the miniature but you can also it's good to also think on this in what position your lamps on your desk will be when you will be making final photos so i like to first take photos of the miniature in the same environment which will be used later for for the final photos and then i'm trying to reproduce reflections from these photos on the miniature thanks to this the real reflections will appear there where i painted my reflections right now these reflections that you can see are appearing in a bit different places because the positions of the lamps is different than it will be later in the final photos moment so i'm not going to reproduce these reflections i'm more about i'm thinking rather about how to paint this reflection in a way that would make it look good and realistic on the final photos and okay i think i decided I think that it will be good to make big reflection in here then shadow over here and a small reflection on the top i think that this can look good so now i will need white paint as white paint i'm using white paint from polycolor uh, because it's i like it better than than vallejo white paint it has better pigment and if I remember correctly, it, it is actually cheaper to use this paint. Oh no. And well, if you are new here, you should know that when you are mixing your paints, it's better to mix it with something like this. It's basically a brush with a silicone ending instead of hair. And for such fee. and it's called color shaper or clay shaper de depending on the on the shop okay so for mixing always use something like this thanks to this your brush will live for much longer so now i mixed uh, like you saw dark flesh tone with white paint in order to create such color like this Okay, and now let's mm. 
let's uh, okay so how uh, Okay, so let's say that this miniature will be mostly seen from this position. Okay, so I will paint this reflection like that. Of course, this refle reflection has to be rounded. Yeah, no, I need to paint it with this mixture. This is why you should always work on the concave elements first. Because when you are working on them, you will always uh, destroy and make convex elements dirty with with paint so work on this first okay and now we need another reflection in here Yeah, it looks uh, not good, but just because we are making a sketch right now, so. You can apply more layers. Well, it's actually important to apply more layers. It's also important to let the first layers dry. So when you are applying thin layers of paint, then they are drying quicker. And you can apply new layers also quicker. And thanks to that, to this, the whole whole work goes much better. Okay, so now we need another tonation. So for that I'm mixing more. Uh, so what I need to do is that I need to basically create colors that will go gradiently from dark to bright. So while I'm presenting to you percentage on the right side of the video, it's not most important and you shouldn't go too crazy about it. What I need to create is just mid-tones. Just 
that will allow me later to create smooth code transitions. And at this point, everything is too bright. Okay, much better. Okay, so as you can see, cores are going gradually from bright to dark. And yeah, I can now create more layers of paint. So this is the brightest mixture after the, the first one. As you can see with this color, I'm painting over the edges of this reflection. Because it's bright, so it's covering is less good than darker colors. So I'm using the previously created layer layers. And I'm painting also uh, the second reflection that is located in here because this reflection has to be a bit darker than the first one because it's not illuminated directly but it's illuminated by the light that is reflecting from other objects. Now the new layer.
so yeah as you can see we're slowly going gradually uh, what is most important is that while i want to have smooth color transitions i like to also have sudden reflection that's why here is big bright area and now as you can see the new layers of colors are taking much less space than this reflection over here. It looks more natural this way. And in a moment we will take take care of the of the holes in the in the shield but now the last layers Okay, that it will now it will be much easier to create um, smooth co color transitions between bright and dark areas. Okay, so the base is prepared. So now is another thing. Another thing is that we have all of these holes in the shield. And they need to be painted in a way that makes sense. So when we have small dents, then I'm using color that is darker, but not much darker, just a little bit. But when they are bigger holes, then I need to use darker color. But depending on the shape of the of the dent, uh, they need to be different everywhere. Every dent, every dent needs to be treated as an individual case. Let's start with this color. Of course, what I'm painting right now is that I'm painting shadows casted by the top edge of the dent. And the shadow will be the darkest here and then it will get brighter up to the point where there will be another reflection because the hole will be facing the source of light with uh, it's flat surface, so it will be reflecting it as well.
Okay, so now I'm using bright color. Well, bottom parts of this dance must be bright. And well, keep in mind that right now I'm just preparing a sketch and I will make it look good later. And that uh, while we have these mixtures, we should also mix them be between between them together to create another mid-tones that will allow us to work quickly on better fitting shadows. And we shouldn't we should avoid in create avoid creating two dark shadows on details like this because they are well that, that would be realistic. And bottom edge has to be bright, even brighter, but we'll get to this in a moment. Now, this is the other case because the light is going from here, from here, and it's sliding in here, so <laughs> shadows will look work a bit different in there. It's it's in one hand I'm painting easy thing because a shield, but on the other hand, when we want to make it good, then there are many things that we have to keep in mind while working on it. And it's making it a bit complicated. Okay, I think it's time to uh, start making this smooth because um, I need to know exactly where which the detail is starting and where it's ending. So for this, I need uh, to have this surface better looking to look more uh, clear right now because of all the lines that are creating this gradual way of uh, because of this all layers it it's simply not easy to see where which hole is and how i know i know it's it's hard to understand what i just said yeah i know sorry let's just focus on the fact that we need to blend these things together right now so yeah i this is my special technique technique so I'm taking color from the darker layer and I'm painting tiny stripes with the tip of my brush in the space between brighter and the darker layer. 
like this. I'm trying to barely scratch the surface with my brush. Thanks to this, I'm leaving very thin layers of paint that uh, stripes of paint that are drying very quickly. And I have to apply many of them to create smooth surface, but thanks to this, they are half transparent. And thanks to this, uh, all of this goes very smoothly. It's good to have a nice pointy end of your brush when you're working on it. So just I move it until you see a better side of it. I'm not going to create my super smooth uh, painting over here because it takes more time. And I imagine it would be better if my videos would be a bit quicker. But, well, you know, it's like I want to show you on my videos the whole process. And if you want to make something that looks really good, then it always takes a lot of time. You don't. You don't have really good things sculpted, painted, or made in any other way if there's not enough time. When you're trying to hurry, it works, it looks different. So, yeah, you need to keep in mind that uh, the more gentle your touches. You know, it, if you're trying to barely scratch the surface, then you're leaving really small amount of paint. And thanks to this, it can it can go smooth and nice, and you have very good precision over what you are doing. And it's the same thing that people are doing when they are creating shadows with pencil or color pencils. This is the same technique. As it turned out, it can be used for painting miniatures. So yeah, I just gave up you my secret techni technique for free. You're welcome. Okay, now the next layer of paint. And like I said, you can mix colors between each other to create more mid-tones, then uh, creating this transitions can go even, even easier. But if you don't have problems with, with this and it goes well, there's no reason to create another mid-tones. It will just make your work uh, longer. So you just, well, first, I would recommend to first try to work uh, with these normal mixtures and then if it doesn't work in the way how you would like, to, would like it to work, then you can try to create more mid-tones. Okay, I will speed up the video now because I will do the same thing over and over again.
Okay, so this is how the shield looks now after I cleaned up a bit. Uh, I made black lining and stuff. And now I see that uh, in order to make good looking copper, I need to have orange reflections in the shadows. So here I shouldn't paint it like this. I need orange color in there. So it is a bit sad because I need to repaint a few things and I will use my own orange so I have deep yellow and I have vermilion from poly color and I will mix these colors in order to make orange paint of course vermilion is very intense color so I will use small amounts of it Okay, this orange is very, very nice. It looks like it's very saturated, very good looking. I never found a good uh, ready orange paint. That's why I prefer, prefer to mix my own. Yeah, and we like to have a more of a reddish orange. I need one of these mixtures darker, so I will mix it with uh, dark flesh tone. A bit more red, a bit more dark flesh tone. Okay, so yeah, this has to be orange, after all. Okay, so I need to repaint it. And it looks very yellow on the miniature. This is odd. But this is not much of a problem. I will just add more red in here. And with it I will paint plenty of stripes around this reflection. Yeah, that's the biggest problem when we are painting uh, the time that paint needs to dry out. So when we are painting copper, the main reflection should be like this, pinkish, but the reflection in the shadow should be orange. That's why it's a little bit complicated. But it's, you will make it like once or twice and you will understand what to do and how. And because I'm painting a worn, worn out shield, I can be less precise. I mean, I can create a bit of structure on its surface. It won't cause, it shouldn't cause any problem. So now I will just paint uh, plenty of stripes on the edges of this, of this orange reflection. The closer I am to space, which I want to be brighter, the more gentle my touches of the brush are. I barely, I'm barely scratching the surface. And 
also going with this very reddish color from the borders to the to the middle I'm making this color more saturated Okay, this looks weird now, I know. So maybe I will add a bit of red on the edges of this shield. I'm pretty sure that it will look good in the end but I understand that this can be a bit of a surprise right now I think that I should make a stronger shadow on the bottom of the shield I think that this reflection came out uh, simply as a bit too big and this is a bit of a problem but it's not very problematic because now as you can see I'm just making it a bit smaller by painting tiny stripes once again this was supposed to be a very short video tutorial I was yeah, I, I thought that this will go faster and smoother. But I haven't painted anything, haven't paint. I didn't paint anything with uh, copper and MM in a while. 
So I guess I'm a bit rusty. <laughs> of course, it will all look also um, different when I will apply uh, platine and rust on the shield. So I'm not very worried about this. I'm just surprised that at this point it looks a bit unnatural and I'm not sure why. This is a really big surprise to me. Okay, I think that it's important to start working on steel. It will look different uh, when steel elements will be in place as well. Okay, so first I will take uh, neutral gray. Okay, of course. This is what you can see is uh, black gray. This is black gray mixed 50 50 with black. Okay, so first I want to mark uh, the reflection. Of course, reflection has to on these elements has to go in the same way like it does on the shield. So it has to be rounded like this.
almost there. Okay, so the top I will leave with this to, to be a bit darker, but on the bottom I need one more one more color for reflections. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna be able to use this. So white paint once again. And now I will mix a blue gray paint with it. The whole idea is to have a very, very bright color for reflection that is a bit darker than white. So that's the idea. That's the idea. So something like this. I used to use um, ready colors like. Uh, space was gray was was very good for me years ago, but with time I I discovered that I prefer to just mix things up on my own. So this is going to be the brightest color for the metal elements. Okay, so once again, I need to follow the the main reflection. Which goes like this right now, as you can see. So keep in mind, of course, that the the shield is uh, rounded so don't create straight lines on it when you are painting uh, reflection and shadows everything has to be rounded like in here Reflections on the steel element can be can go a bit wider because these details are above uh, this copper element that is in the middle. Okay, so this is uh, the sketch for steel elements, and I feel that uh, copper shield already looks a bit more less weird with it. So now I will just make these layers better looking of the camera to save us some time and to skip to the next step. Okay, so now I need to create smooth transitions between all of these colors. I will make it in the same way, like with copper. Now I take a bit of black gray and a bit of neutral gray to create mid tone. And with this mid tone, I will start the first blendings. And I will make more visible scratches than before. Because after all, I want this shield to look well. It's a skeleton warrior. I'm pretty sure he wasn't born like this, so we can safely assume that his weapon is old and rusty. Nobody gave him new equipment. It's, I guess it's not like there is a necromancer and he's going like, "Oh, hello, fellow skeletons, welcome aboard." 
go in there, you can find their new equipment for our fight. No, I guess they are just looking for warriors that were buried with their weapons. And then you can ask me why I'm painting everything so clean if I am assuming things like this. Well, that's that's just the thing about about style and what you like and what you don't like and I like to paint in this style so uh, if I would be painting in dirty way I wouldn't be happy with it so and painting is all about uh, having a nice time so so I'm painting according to my style and I'm still painting with a brush size 2 as you can see my work is still very precise. And be sure if you are going to copy what I'm doing here to create scratches, longer scratches from time to time that are going in like other directions. So as you can see, uh, I'm creating uh, smooth color transitions on on warmed out steel is really easy because we don't want this to be too smooth. We don't want this to be smooth at all. Of course, you can go with uh, these colors back and forth. So right now I'm painting once again scratches with neutral gray over blue gray pale area. And now back to blue gray pale. Okay, and now I will have to create a new mixture because this bright reflection is very bright. So I need to have 
like any kind of mid tone for it. So I'm just mixing it a little bit with the grip iron. Like I said, the percentage is just more or less. I'm just trying to have colors that are going from bright to dark. And that's that's the whole philosophy. So once again, scratches everywhere with just the tip of the brush. That's the one important thing. Because when you are painting with the, just the tip of your brush, you are creating very thin lines. And it's good to have a pointy end of your brush. And I'm painting scratches over here as well in order to create interesting uh, surface. I'm trying to be as chaotic as I can, but I know it's not easy. And like I mentioned before, in this case, I don't have to worry too much about creating structure on the surface. It would be completely okay in this specific case.
obviously uh, the edges do not look great right now and we need to create reflections on the edges I'm making a mixture that is just a little bit darker than the main reflection but maybe I should actually go with just with the reflection uh, just with this color from the reflection and as you can see I'm trying to make irregular I'm trying to make this reflection irregular uh, thanks to this it will also look like it's like the edge is full of holes in it Try to be irregular when you are painting them. This makes everything look more realistic. Of course, I will have to make the edges on the other side visible too, but uh, let's skip this part and go back. Let's go back to uh, working on the shield for a moment. So, yeah, I need a much brighter color for the reflections on the sh on the copper elements now. Yes, even even brighter than before. Equivalent of this color for steel and a man. And with it, I will mark now reflect because earlier. Oh, sorry. Oh my god. Uh, what I've been doing previously was painting shadows, and now I want to paint reflections. This will make these uh, holes look much more three-dimensional. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, I'm right now thinking about all the realistic ways of painting it, analyzing where would be the, the source of light and which shadows would be, would be casted under which angle. There are many, many things that could, I could think about right now to apply in here. But as, as you can see, this video is already, it's much longer than I expected. I thought that video about painting a shield will be much, much, much quicker. So there are things that could be done much better. And I even know what and how. But it would took more time and I imagine that you do not want to spend this much time on a shield. I could, because I like the process of painting miniatures. So when I'm painting, it's the goal for me. Uh, having painted miniature is not the most important thing for me. It's, it's the process. I love to you know, work with paint, see how uh, kind of a stories are appearing in front of my eyes. You know, by stories, I mean that we have just a black thing. We don't know how it can look like. And, uh, and when I'm painting, I feel like I'm discovering what it really is. So, that's why I'm spending a lot of time on painting. I'm not trying to speed up things. I try to create nice, nice looking elements, details. Everything is important for me. Of course, it's completely different when you are painting your miniatures for gaming, because then your goal is to have a miniature painted, finished, ready for game then of course you want to make everything as quick as it's possible. Yeah, you just need to keep in mind that these are two completely different things. And I'm rep representing painting for fun. Okay, so now I will paint a few more dense just because I think that there is not enough of them but now I will make a real small dance ah. <laughs> I will make small dance So as you can see, I'm painting now the bottom edge. Okay. And maybe one in here. Okay. So this is reflection. Hmm. One more. I think that this scratch needs to be a bit brighter. Whew. And okay, and because I want this dents to be shallow, I need to use pretty bright mixture for it the darker color you will use the deeper the dent is
And now a gentle shadow above. Of course here the shadows are darker so I need to use darker color for the shadow on the dent. Okay, so this is how you create dents on obviously any surface. This is how they look. Okay, and now we'll work on making the, the patin and the rust, and then it will be finally done. So yeah, I will fix a few details now to save us some time and see you in a moment. Okay, guys, I don't know if you've noticed something, but I just did. So there was something not quite okay about this shield for me. Uh, something, something was not okay and I didn't know what it is. And then I realized that I decided to go with a bit risky thing, which is not placing source of light like I always do in here, but I move the source of light oh, okay here. So it's sliding of the of this side of the shield and it's going there. That's why we have uh, the back reflection in there. If I would make normal source of light in here, then this would have to be rounded like this this part would be bright and then we would have reflection here and now i i know that i wanted this to look more interesting but now i think that it was a terrible idea very very bad because what i did later is that i placed source of light like it would be above and i should make it otherwise that's why now we have like two sources of light, one that is reflecting on the shield and the other source of light on the dent. And it's not working and this is why it looks weird. So I have to repaint it now in the way that will make it look more normal. So I have to make all of these reflections and shadows on the exact opposite way. So. I will make it off the camera to save us some time. Or I will um, start painting this too on the camera to show you what I'm doing and the rest I will fix off the camera. Oh my god, it's like I know that there is something wrong about this shield, but I couldn't see it for quite some time. And now I had my dinner. And now I see that is such a rookie mistake from me. I'm really surprised how I, yeah, because I'm always painting with source of light above my head and recording videos is a bit stressful too. So I just got, it, it was a mix up. Yeah, recording is very uncomfortable and stressful, so that's how this happened. So yeah, so I just need to paint everything the other way 
as you can see reflections on the shield are in the right way and I imagine that when I will be done with it, it it will all start to look much better it's not very much it's not a lot of work but I think that this video is going to be too long anyway so I want to make it shorter in these places where I can that's why I will present to you how I'm fixing these two dents and not the rest of them this dent is uh, is deeper than the first one so as you can see yeah I have to it's not much it's not much work it's it's okay I just I'm really surprised by how could I not see this area I was just painting in too much automatic way okay so as you can see now yeah it will look better with with them changed so now once again source of light is in here it's sliding through the shield so it has to reflect on the dance in in this direction and now i will repaint rest the rest of them of the camera so see you in a moment okay i finally fixed the reflections on the shield as you can see now it looks different but now it finally makes sense what is happening in here finally makes sense yeah it, it looks more nat natural natural so yeah the miniature will be seen like this and i illuminated it from this side i don't know what i was thinking when I was doing like this, this I thought I I know what I was thinking. I thought that it would look interesting if we will have the reflection in this place, but it was stupid of me. How stupid! Now I will have to paint this entire miniature in this weird way. Okay, I did it to myself. I know it's my mistake. Okay, so mm, now I need to finally make make patting on it so I will use turquoise paint yeah all you need is just paint you don't need any anything else so yeah lots of water I'm removing most of water in in a paper towel and piece of paper. And now I will need to hide this color in the shadows. I mean in the corners of the of the of the shield. 
Uh, why in places like this? Because uh, for some reason, patin appears fair at the first time on the beginning. Patin appears in places where there are in co corners of things. I guess uh, water stays in there and moisture. So on any kind of joints and around other metal objects, this is appearing. So it would be on the corners. Oh my God, not diluted enough. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you, you need to be careful not to use too thick paint. Right now I'm pushing this color into the corners. So yeah, of course, I want this to be di dirty, but I want to uh, also have control over this, what is happening. Yes, patin would appear also on the steel elements because for the same reason why uh, rust will appear also on the copper elements. Things like this are moving moving with uh, with water, rain, etc. And other things are getting dirty of them. So the, sh the shield will be the cleanest in the middle of it, of the shield, because there are less things that could keep moisture around it. It would be also more put in, in the um, dance. Yeah, I need to be careful with this color. Uh, you need to keep in mind that also patin has a few... There are more than one color of patin. There are those that are more green. There are those that are more turquoise, like this one. But there is... Of course, it depends on the metal what's uh, exactly in the metal amounts of minerals i'm not a chemistry guy so i cannot explain this process in a professional way uh, yeah it's like brass has more greenish patin while copper is going more into blue and turquoise intonations. Why is this happening? I don't know. Okay, the thing is that I want to make this uh, shield look older, but I also do not want to destroy uh, this whole shadow and light. Uh, relationship that I just created. That's why I'm not going to make the uh, entire shield turquoise. Turquoise? I have no idea how you pronounce it in English. Sorry. Uh, 
Uh, this is going to be very interesting in this part because we have turquoise and orange colors close to each other and these are very much opposite colors so it should look in a very very interesting way And there is the thing that doesn't make any sense and it's not realistic at all, but I'd like to create color transitions from one color to another. So I will now try to create smooth transition in this orientation from this pinkish to turquoise. And for that I need to use place technique, what I basically am doing uh, for quite some time, but when I will use a uh, smaller amount of paint. Oh my god. Uh, that's not part of the plan. Then I can create very delicate transition from these colors. And it's not realistic, but I like the way how it looks. Okay, I think this looks really cool, cool right now. I, I think that these uh, glazes are exactly what this shield needed. I think it looks so much more interesting right now. Okay, I think I will leave it like this. Maybe a bit in here. And now I will add a bit of rust. Of course, I can work with rust in the same way, like I just did in here. I actually really like this blue color on the metal that, that appeared right now, so I'm a bit scared of doing anything in here. <sighs> but I think I, I, I need to. Okay, let's see what will happen with this. This is Dark Rust Wash from Valeo Mecha Watering, Weathering. It's just very diluted brown paint, but I like the, uh, the color of this paint, of this specific paint, because I must admit that while this is just paint, uh, its color is very very good for rust because it's it's perfect balance between being orange and brown. Yeah, I like this color a lot. So um, I I love this blue color in here. So I will leave it like this. Here we have nice 
nice uh, contrast in here so i will try to make these brown tonations to f i will try to hide them rather in here um So yeah, I'm I'm pushing as you can see I'm pushing this color in front of my brush. And leaving and I'm leaving this paint in the most shaded uh, parts. This will be very interesting because it's giving another color to the shield and I think that this is going to be very interesting. Okay, so yeah, I'm close to the end because I like the effects that I'm uh, getting over here. So as you know from this, and if you are one of my patrons, patrons, if you are on my Patreon, then from my other tutorials, I like to hide uh, colors in the mid tones and. This is what I did right now. I hit this rust in the shadows. And this is a very delicate way of coloring miniature. And it also allows the main composition that I created in here to, to stay in here. And from realistic point of view, what I, what I have done right now doesn't make any sense. But please keep in mind that for that, that for me, uh, it's much more interesting to make it. It's much more important to make it uh, look interesting and colorful than to make it look realistic. So please keep it keep this in mind, especially that I just finished. Okay, let's see him from. A different perspective. Okay, so once again, this is how the shield looks um, with bigger zoom. Okay, but you need to keep in mind that this is just a one detail on the miniature. And yeah, and that the idea is once again, I'm saying this for the last time, 
that for some reason I decided that the source of light is in here. It was a weird decision, but I've made it and now I have to paint like this and I don't know how to make it well. But yeah, I have to deal with this right now. Okay, let's focus on the front for a moment. Yes, good old times when I placed the source of light in a normal place. Okay, and the back. And now, as you can see, the sh the shield is painted in much colder tonations than the front. Maybe I should do something about this to make this work with the rest of the miniature. Okay, I it looks weird, but I I actually like it. It looks naturalistic, but. I like the colors, the colors that, that I use in here and how it looks now. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and maybe join my other patrons on my Patreon. That would be great. But if not, that's okay too. I will work more on this skeleton and I think I will present how to paint the rest of him very soon. I think that the next uh, video will be about painting his skull. And you can answer me in the comment section below. Do we, in this situation, call this a face or just a front part of the skull? Because I have no idea. Okay, okay. so once again, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you on the next one. Bye!